for Not tips. neutral. <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> right. They, we have two extremely different styles of Steve gameplay, I also want to say, which is also what makes you... It, Especially with someone like Syrup, it makes me really enjoy watching the way that his mind works with Steve. Yeah, you've got a lot of time to process how both of these players both utilize the resources ahead of them and then react to the resources yep. that their opponents have. Like, I was talking about how much is on the table when you've got Pac-Man Bonus Fruit and Rob Gyro. Now we got a whole nother beast for what's on the table between how each of the Steve players utilizes blocks, what type of weapons they have at their disposal, how often they're going to be throwing around uh, the minecart, and also how often they're going to have the iron to do so. And not even just the iron, who can get the diamond first? I mean, it was Dino who did get it first, and only is now my, uh, crafting those diamond tools. But Syrup opting to stay with these iron tools instead, going to be opting to go for some more uh, more polished combos here, rather than the raw kill potential of that diamond backer, for example, with the pickaxe of the jab from the diamond sword. I mean. I feel like D Dog is very much a little more of a brute and serve with a little more brain when it comes to playing Steve. I think that's a fair assessment, but also it it oh. needs to be uh, really nice. Oh no, not the untackable. Okay, yeah, no, you're in a terrible situation there. Uh, but but tapping on what you were saying about like brute versus brain when it comes to the force that could take it in this match, it's. Honestly, it's it's painted a picture, and I'm well. liking the picture. You're putting letters <laughs> on the board. Well, you don't I, gotta analyze. Just punch the hell out of him. You hit him with the stick. You punch him. You put anvil on his head, and you kind of explode at 113 percent. And D Dog is still at 100. All three stocks, even dying back here. Had it been around center stage or closer to the left side of stage, yes, would have taken it. Thankfully, Syrup picks it right back up. We are back in the fray, new whole stock for d Dog here, and a brand new uh, diamond pickaxe, uh, diamond tools in his kit as well. Yeah, but that's still 113 on board. That is going to impact a lot of those early game uh, combos, especially with diamond. See how easy d Dog's able to get out of these situations and immediately turn it to a 2-1 stock count. What was even more unfortunate is that, you know, Syrup's tools did break. You saw that back air did not, was toolless. It was just Zeeb's raw fish, like, okay, backhand out of here, please. And now it's really uh, all up to d Dog here to maybe get this edge guard, and yeah. he absolutely does. I think Syrup was like, I can't even slide through that and get the magnet hands through those blocks. Just take the L. We got a game one over to d Dog, which I... We're seeing a little bit of a reversal here coming in from uh, Zeno Saga specifically. Hey, but he was scrapping. Oh, yeah. He was scrapping. He made it work and taking all of that momentum and just boiling it over, Serum. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, you can have a game plan. You can have as thorough of a game plan as you want. And you know you've got the tools to execute said game plan when it comes to with Steve versus the table. But if you're just too busy getting hit, good luck executing said game plan. I don't think we seen any stage swaps at all. No. Going right back over to Small Battlefield, of course. I Honestly, I agree. You get a good combination of the dirt, the wood, the iron, and of course the stone. You get a great, pretty good equal amount of chance of getting the gold uh, ingot for those reinforced mine cards, which of course you can see Syrup utilizing right now. And the iron limit here, you gotta be a little more careful about it. You don't get as often as the uh, more invaluable blocks, but it can still be very useful, especially Syrup who loves utilizing that minecart for uh, damage and travel. Yeah, I think even just taking into consideration, it's a more balanced resource amount for a small battlefield, and that's what both players would want in this situation. You're going to constantly be building so that you could block away the ledge, so that you can build up walls and buy yourself space. You're going to, of course, get your resources as you need, as you already talked about, a balanced amount of iron, making sure that you have those good tools immediately, and plenty of carts to throw at your opponent. But then also, both players have diamond at their disposal. If they feel comfortable enough to do so, they can have those tools at the ready. Oh, I love that idea of the TNT, activating it very early on with that pickaxe and hopefully trying to uh, guesstimate a drop down to platform from D-Dog, but D-Dog was uh, very aware of that setup in general. Able to up to uh, Syrup out of that minecart, surprisingly enough, 128 on uh, D-Dog, who just now lost a very pivotal uh, tool there, which of course is that iron pickaxe, and putting him out of his misery is going to be Syrup with that anvil. I mean, it may have seemed like an obvious situation, but it, I really do love the down air there. The fact that it was able to just completely just bulwark through D-Dog's defenses. The, the up smash just meant nothing there. Oh, little TNT. Where's the, where's the pressure plate? We're going to activate it ourselves. Yep. And there it is. I love that tech so much. I think it's super, like... It's really cool, honestly. It's like, if you get in, you get your explorer, you're going to die. If I do it, I live. And it's okay. Yeah, and no, it's very smart. 
I think it's it's very much akin to how people will respond to. Um, I think Snake Grenade is a, oh, yeah. a resource to compare it to, where like, yeah, you could just eat the hit, you could ignore it entirely, but you could remove it in a way that neutralizes its effect for the user. And TNT covers such a wide amount of space, being able to deny that coverage and just rush down the Steve while they're getting the resources together. I think it's a great decision to make. Jab, jab, it's a four dark, big if true. We're gonna be seeing a little bit of syrup kind of uh, Pressuring out a lot of these spaces that D-Dog now cannot occupy. Using that dirt block, okay, you're gonna go up here. I'm gonna catch you up there with that up to with my with my uh, pickaxe uh, with my pick, may I say? And we're gonna be also building, you said earlier, using those invi those uh invaluable materials and getting armor resources right back up. There's a lot more iron on the bar for D-Dog than there is for Syrup, however, so those minecarts, those anvils from Syrup will not be in play for a while, unlike D-Dog, who uses that right to his advantage and drops down and gets that fair going. Just as the resources go away, you can see them build right back up. Syrup so getting himself into a position. Tons of cobble. So those walls that he's going to be building up a lot more meaningful, forcing D-Dog to position around them instead of just breaking right through them. The minecarts were roommates. They it's so funny. Right there. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Us. Minecart. Me and who, actually? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, gonna be seeing a little bit of a battle of the axes, gonna be seeing Syrup win that out just narrowly, and then the uh, hop up back area really strong for him right there in that moment. However, D Dog is still kind of in the in the winner's son in the uh, driver's seat here, of course, being at 0%, brand new stock. The resources are very even as well, I must say. Some more wood for D Dog here, but we draw them all the way and we go in for that kill. That is D Dog redeeming himself from the New Jersey uh, Steve Syrup. Well, there's a lot of S's there. I, used to. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was great. Really good improvement from D-Dog. Honestly, I like the fact that he was able to roll with the aggressive play, take that momentum, and just figure, all right, this is my game plan. Was it the game plan he came into the set with? Maybe not. But is it the one that worked? Yes, it is. He recognized that, and he kept that up stock after stock after stock. And throughout game two, it looked like it was difficult for Syrup to find strong footing, even when he had the resources or the stage positioning to do so. He just constantly had D-Dog breathing down his throat. Even right here, I mean... Actually, I'm saying right here like I know what's going on. Oh, of course I do. That's the last game. Me, I'm in minecart, <laughs> and I go down. Well, you look at the positioning, you see D-Dog just sort of hovering around lackadaisically in middle stage, but meanwhile, Syrup's trying to find something with the positioning that he's been put into. He didn't go to the ledge on purpose. He what got the put hell there. Is going on here, and we talked oh about video games. God. And we talked about video games. There's a video game. You better join hey, us right hey, hey. now. What's this guy? What's this guy know about talking about video games? I I don't know anything about video games. No, I, don't I don't know, know what you're talking about. What's that? going on? I 